Um, what existing organizational constraints or barriers have you seen teachers face? Wow, <laughs> a lot. Um, how they f face in like more inclusive mathematics teaching? Yeah, what is, what's existing already that's making it difficult for our teachers to be more inclusive? And then you talked about it a little bit with the yeah. RSP and the push-in and the yeah. pull-out and those things. Is there anything that stands out in addition to those pieces? Well, one barrier that I was about to talk about, but I feel like I answered that question for too long. One really important barrier is IEP goals. So um, I found that recently when I walk around a math conference, like when I speak to math coaches, they're often really insistent that they want me to do something and do something like immediately about math goals. I met this woman at a conference recently. She's like, you work on special education mathematics? Yes, I've heard about you. What are you going to do about IEP goals? And I was like, OK. <laughs> this was about two years ago. And since then, I have heard so many educators, math educators, special educators, when I, when I come with this message that we can do better, we can have more inclusive teaching, students with disabilities can be included in really rigorous and meaningful mathematics, uh, what I am frequently told is, what is keeping that from happening is IEP goals that do not allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's important to remember that IEP goals are really an equity concern. So they are created as part of individual education plans so that teachers can be held accountable for the growth of students. And so in that way, teachers are legally mandated to follow IEP goals mm -hmm. and to show that kids are making progress along those goals. So they're incredibly important in terms of the civil rights of students with disabilities. Mm -hmm. What has happened with IEP goals is that they tend to be very rote and procedural. And then the instruction for kids needs to match those goals. And so we can't, um, in this, I've heard teachers tell me, we can't include this child in this kind of uh, standards-based inquiry mathematics because they have not yet achieved their math goals that are, say, uh, memorization of math facts mm -hmm. that could be a couple of grade levels below. So I've been trying to think about this and work about this and learn, work about this, work on this, and learn from teachers who are trying things out in their practice. So when thinking about IEP goals, I think we need to focus IEP goals on not just what's easy to measure, but what's really important. And if I think about it that way, and then I, want to focus goals on the kind of practices of mathematicians. And that connects, I think, to the standards of mathematical practice. How can we shift IEP goals towards what's long-term most important for kids? And that's engaging in problem solving, making sense of problems, um, engaging in mathematical discussion, making sense of structure to help you understand complex mm -hmm. mathematics. All of those are the standards of mathematical practice. So we know they're the most important practices for kids to develop into mathematicians, but um, those are the same kinds of habits that we want to develop in students with disabilities so they can be successful in an inquiry. The other kinds of goals I think are important are those that are focused on the most important concepts that kids need to engage in the general education classroom. I don't think that that is ever multiplication facts. I don't think multiplication facts need to be memorized before a kid is allowed to be to participate in general education curriculum no matter their age. Nothing that relies on memorization is necessary in this day and age when we have calculators in our pockets. Absolutely.